Hello, my name is Christina Tallens and I work for the Lorna Young Foundation. We're a small UK-based charity uh, who deliver radio agricultural extension information to farmers in Africa. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to be telling you a bit about a project that we have with the Walker Institute at the University of Reading to deliver groundwater and climate behaviour information to African farmers. First of all, let me give you some context. So the area where we're operating in, in northern Ghana and Burkina Faso, is an it's an area which has extended periods of low rainfall. And this is obviously having a big impact on uh, groundwater supplies and the ability of the communities um, to really plan ahead because uh, groundwater is having a massive impact on crops, on their food security and, and the health of um, the poorest in those regions. Radio extension really does provide a very um, efficient and um, cost-effective uh, mechanism and, and an opportunity to give information to the communities that are most vulnerable to climate change. So the aim of this programme is to deliver radio extension to support the climate resilience of the communities and provide the knowledge that they need to plan ahead. So how do we do this? Well, this is uh, essential. It is essential that we take a bottom up approach. So first of all, we um, have to talk to the local communities. We have to go out to the local communities to start to identify what are the specific challenges that they face linked to uh, groundwater issues? So if we are uh, going to give you an example of uh, some of the challenges um, that we found during a needs assessment, uh, Walker Institute identified these factors that were leading to the vulnerability of those communities. So there were issues around water sources, uh, access to groundwater in the communities, uh, another issue that was brought up was gardening uh, and the groundwater table seasonality, the impact on production and yields. Um, we had an issue around the dependence on natural resources, the impact on uh, agriculture and crops, um, the issues around deforestation and forest resources. There were also uh, impacts around health on groundwater, so an increasing of diseases, um, low access to um, healthcare and services, and perhaps there was also more information needed around um, how to deal with different illnesses that were happening at different times of the year. On education and information, uh, there was very low access to information around agricultural practices, around um, conservation of water. Um, there was also um, very low understanding of the information received by farmers when it came from expert sources. So this is an important point because farmers essentially listen to farmers and they understand each other's language. And this is why the, the radio programmes are built around farmers. There were also issues around agriculture and livestock, the impact of, of non-available water on livestock, diseases, dying livestock. And finally, there was issues around the exposure to climate. So extreme events in the communities and then, you know, changes in seasons, cycles with regard to crop production and decreasing water uh, resources. So once we had identified those challenges, um, the issue uh, then comes to identifying when we are going to develop radio programs that could have the most impact in terms of timing. And this is where we need um, an agricultural calendar so that we know what crops we're dealing with. And here you can see um, in Ghana, the cassava, maize, millet, sorghum, rice and yams are some of the most important crops grown in the region. And this gives you an agricultural calendar for when the different activities of farmers are going to be. And we also looked at the nutritional stress calendar. Um, and this really, again, looks at the availability of food and um, when different types of illnesses and diseases are most likely to happen. So you have diarrhea, malaria, measles and coughs and cold. So um, when we have that information linked to the challenges, we're able to actually develop um, 
a program that's 48 to 52 weeks long and we insert the messages that are going to have the most impact into that. And this is really where we uh, create the farmer field groups. So in Ghana, the farmer field groups have come from gardening groups. And in Burkina Faso, they have been women's groups involved in shea butter production. But they are our control group. They are going to be our um, extension uh, services over the radio. They are going to be providing the training to other farmers to enable them to improve productivity on crops and plan around groundwater management on all of the issues that we had identified earlier around health, nutrition, um, climate uh, events, um, access to water. So the most important thing to say here is that the farmer field groups are effectively radio listening groups. They uh, have to be 50% women. And it's a bottom-up approach. Um, they are going to be developing the radio broadcasting agenda. And in order to do this, we need to identify with them what are going to be the main objectives of the radio programs. What is it that they think is the most important for their communities? At that moment, we will also go out, speak to agricultural extension officers and um, local veterinarians if necessary to collect content and to get a multi-stakeholder group involved in um, giving us information whilst we air the radio programs. So taking the example of um, Ghana, um, the farmers there identified the following objectives and targets for the radio program. First of all, what they wanted to do was improve yields and uh, provide more information on alternative or uh, drought resistant crops. And these could be early, you know, early maturing, late maturing. Um, and what we asked them was, what kind of improved varieties and crops do you think uh, we should be talking about? And at the time we had agricultural extension officers in the room. And so they opted to speak about the agricultural calendar for millet, sorghum, maize and soya. Then we also talked about the, the, the pressures on certain crops around water. So, um, so in particular looking at livelihoods and water thirsty crops. So in Ghana, sheer butter uh, is a livelihood option, but there is deforestation associated with that. So for the production of one kilo of shea butter, you would uh, have seven kilos of firewood. And there's also a lot of water used in the processing and the cleaning of the shea nuts. And in Burkina, the water issues were around parboiling rice. So we, you know, there, the programs needed to talk about costs, access and uh, sustainability of the crop. And, and then we needed to develop messages to build on early adopters. The second objective that the farmers had in both Burkina Faso and Ghana was to improve knowledge around water harvesting and the resource efficiency when it came to water. Um, some of the issues that we might consider would be access to water information and water conservation techniques, which uh, can also be around sustainable land management. But essentially, when it came to water harvesting, we were looking at um, pits, uh, techniques for collecting rainwater and uh, drip irrigation. The third objective of uh, the program then identified by those farmers was around sustainable land management. So the most important issues that they could see were how to promote the efficient use of fertilizer. Fertilizers become very expensive and um, we were thinking about uh, organic fertilizers and inputs as a replacement. So um, they wanted to talk about how to make compost from manure and organic waste on the farm. They also talked about developing soil erosion control in the worst affected communities. So there was questions around what types of cover crops or plants or grasses could help address soil erosion. Also in terms of nutrients for um, crops, they were talking about which plants could help to fix nitrogen. And again, coming back to um, soil erosion, it was the whole technique around terracing and um, water efficiency and retention of moisture in the soil, uh, including mulching, tillage, uh, cover crop, drip and irrigation. 
And last but not least uh, was access to information around how to improve food nutrition. Um, so some of the implications of water availability and general health issues in the area. And water availability really impacts on the types of crops that you're able to grow and the seasonality. Um, in particular, with regards to food nutrition, we looked at crops in the home gardens. So um, farmers were asking if we could produce the use of certain seeds or tools and you know, provide agricultural extension information on those. We looked at any crops that were resilient to droughts so that there was food available for longer periods. We looked at high yielding crops um, when they were going to be available and the cost of access to crops. In terms of uh, gardening, uh, the farmers wanted information on onions, watermelons, peppers, okra, tomatoes and eggplants, which is part of their uh, everyday diet. And in Burkina, they wanted information on cabbage, eggplants, chilies. Um, we did afterwards develop with agricultural extension staff uh, programs around uh, orange flesh potatoes and vitamin A. Um, the, and the last thing to consider was the livestock health and food links. So when there is no water, there is actually no water for the livestock, which are in many cases still roaming around and they end up dying. This impacts on uh, livelihoods and access to food in the long term. Once we had identified what the objectives and the targets of the radio programmes were going to be, we set out to, uh, again, record the initial programs with the farmer field listening groups. In Ghana, uh, there were about 15 farmers in two target areas mobilized to form the listening groups. And um, they were, we were going to have face-to-face -face meetings every three months. In that uh, radio group, there was a multi-stakeholder approach taken as we try to take in most countries. And that involved agricultural extension staff from the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. Uh, as well as farmer representatives that were involved in saving schemes and local water author authority representatives that would feed into content generation. So the role of the group uh, was to develop the agricultural radio agenda and meet every three months to identify the, the key issues that they needed to address at that point in time and over the next month or two. And this is what we ended up with. So this is a radio agenda and you can see here the radio agenda for the month of May. Um, and you can see that it breaks down into uh, separate um, subject areas, which are our target areas. So in the month of May, there wasn't much around how to improve sustainable land management. However, on uh, target two, improving water harvesting and conservation resources, you can see that we start talking about how to protect water sources to ensure the quality of water is, is good enough for human consumption. We also started to talk about stagnant water and links to mosquitoes, thus malaria. And uh, we started to educate farmers on conservation techniques um, around tie ridges, bonding, cover cropping, mulching and composting. And these are messages um, that were specifically targeted for that point in time, because that's when the rains are going to start towards the end of May. And again, if you move on to area three, you've got improving health and nutrition. And this is where we started to specifically address um, how to avoid hunger during July uh, through the planting of soil. And again, how to avoid hunger during uh, July with the planting of maize. So it gives you different crops there, which we would start communicating on in May because that's when they start to plant them. Um, and then uh, the vegetable gardens below talks a little bit around melons and um, uh, organic imparts. So trying to avoid um, chemical pesticides. And then with regards to our last target uh, area, last objective, it was there was the issue around yields and crops. Um, and here you can see on the left hand side, we've got different types of crops for maize and sorghum and soy. 
and on the right hand side you can see that there are specific dates aligned to each different um, variety so they may be early or late maturing crops uh, drought resistant crops and we would promote the planting of those crops at different times in May and you've got the dates in there so that's really it. Thank you very much for listening. And I thought I would leave you with a video of um, what the farmer field groups look like in Ghana so that you can get a feel for the type of incredible work that they're doing out there. Oh, yes, I am bad. Bad, 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 bad,